if you've written software before, you've probably written tests for that software. And if you're using Python, you've probably used PyTest to do so. If you're building applications that use LLMs, you probably want to write tests for those applications and those features. It makes a ton of sense to use PyTest to do so, to evaluate those LLM applications because you get all the conveniences of running it in a way that you're already familiar with. Today we're excited to announce a Langsmith integration with a PyTest SDK. This will make running evals and tests for your LLM applications 10 times better. In addition to getting an output like this, you can also get an output like this. This will track all the results of your evals over time. It will let you dive in and debug which ones are going wrong. It'll let you share them with non-technical stakeholders. And it will let you log metrics besides just the pass fail. In this video, I'll walk through why you should care about this and why you should use this, and then I'll show a simple example of how to set this up. Let's dive in. All right, so why should you use the Langsmith PyTest integration? First and foremost, it's worth emphasizing that this keeps the exact same features and development experience as you get with PyTest. So you get all of the commands, all of the helper functions, all of the command line ability that you are used to when you use PyTest. This is super handy. It allows you to run your software tests and evals with the same tech stack as you're using to run your LLM tests and evals. So it keeps it in a centralized spot. But there are additional things that you get by using Langsmith. So first, you get tracing of specific runs to Langsmith. So this is great for allowing you to debug while failures occur. If I'm looking at a PyTest output, I often just get the pass failure, but I want to dive in and see more. And this is especially important in LLM applications where it's crucial to look at your data. It's crucial to know exactly what's going in and coming out of each step. And so the Langsmith integration lets you do this and it gives you a superior debugging experience. Secondly, it allows you to log metrics, not just pass and fail. When building LLM applications, you might want to log a variety of numerical or categorical metrics for a particular run. There may not be a clear-cut pass-fail criteria, but there may be some metrics that you want to log, and then you want to track the average of this over time, and that gets into the third point. It allows you to track results over time. When you're evaluating LLM applications, it's oftentimes not just a simple pass-fail for each test case. Rather, there's some gradient of success, and what you care about is moving that success metric up and up and making it better and better over time. And so our Langsmith integration lets you track this. Next, it allows you to share these results with others. This is really important because building LLM applications is not just a single developer or even just developers that are doing it. Rather, it's a whole team effort. We see subject matter experts and product managers getting involved all the time. And so having a shared spot where they can look at the results of these evaluations is crucial for allowing the team to iterate quickly. And finally, we have built-in evaluation functions that help speed up and give you sane defaults for when you're trying to measure the success of how your LLM apps are performing. Let's now take a look at some code before and after integrating Langsmith. So this is a pretty standard test file here. I can see that I have two tests in here. I'm pretending that I'm building basically a marketing agent. Uh, so I have two tests, one for writing a tweet about LLMs and one for writing a LinkedIn post about LLMs. I can see here that I'm importing this function called generate marketing copy. This is the LLM application that I'm building. If I go in here, it's just a single call to an LLM, although you can imagine that this is a more complex agent down the line. And, and, and that's actually a place where this integration shines. But for now, it's just a simple LLM call. And you can see here that the system prompt I gave it is you are an expert technical marketer, and then I give it the request. So I have these two uh, requests that I'm looking at, write a tweet about LLMs, write a LinkedIn post about LLMs. I call this function and then I start asserting things. So I assert that the length of the response is less than 280 for the tweet. And I assert that it's greater than 280 for the LinkedIn post. For the LinkedIn post, I also assert that there are multiple new lines because I like to have that in my LinkedIn posts. And then I have this function score marketing copy. This is actually an LLM as a judge evaluator. 
So if I go into utils, I have the score marketing copy function. And here I can see that I'm passing it into another model and asking it to score it on a scale of one to 10. Then back here, I am taking the result of that and I'm asserting that the score is greater than eight. These are still just totally vanilla PyTest things. So I can evaluate them by going to my command line and running PyTest tests. I can see that it starts running. It's logging the output as it normally does with PyTest. And I can see that it fails. And so the first one here fails where I have a tweet that's longer than 280 characters. Great, so this is what the normal development experience looks like. And for all the reasons mentioned before, this can be improved with the Langsmith integration. So let's take a look at how I would do that because it's pretty easy. I've got the documentation for doing this Langsmith and PyTest integration here. Let's scroll down and I'll see that it's pretty easy to add it in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is mark the test cases as a Langsmith test case. And so I can do that by doing this and I can see that I'm gonna have to do import PyTest to make that real. Awesome. What next? Let's go back here and I can see that I start logging inputs. And so here I have this line, which I'm going to import here. And so I'm going to do from Langsmith import testing. I can then do the log inputs method. So let's grab this. Let's do testing.log inputs. And the reason I'm doing this is this will show up in the test cases that'll be in the Langsmith UI. All right, awesome. Now I can do the same thing with the result, but instead of log inputs, I'm going to do log outputs. All right, easy, what's next? After that, I can see that in this example, I log the reference outputs. So this is useful when I have an expected answer that I want the generation to be. In this case, I don't. So I'm actually gonna skip this. So all of these are optional. I don't have to do it if I don't want to. Then I can see that I do this log feedback. So I am gonna do this, and this is gonna start logging feedback to Langsmith. So the first thing I might wanna log is stuff to do with the length of the response. So here I can see that I test that the response is less than 280 characters. So I'm actually gonna log a few things. The first thing I'm gonna log is just the overall length of the generation. So let's change this to that. All right, awesome. I'm just logging the overall length of the application. And next, I'm going to log a Boolean. So let's do Twitter length, and this is going to assert that the length of the response is less than 280. So I'm taking the same assertion here, and I'm just putting it as a feedback key that I'm logging. Note that I could keep this assert here. The reason to keep the assert here would be to break basically if I don't wanna go past this. So I would still log everything up to this spot, but then when I hit this assertion, I would break. Here, I just wanna log things. I don't actually wanna break or error if, if this fails, so I'm gonna remove this. But again, that's totally just my choice. Here, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna change it to greater than 280 because it's a LinkedIn post and I'm going to change that to LinkedIn length. I'm going to remove that. All right, I can see that here. I test that there's the, these new lines. So let me do that again. And I will do new lines and the score will be a Boolean here. And you know what? I'm going to add in another numerical score because that's part of the value of using the Langsmith integration is that I can log things that are not just Boolean pass fail. And so new lines count, and I'm just gonna do response that count, the new lines. Great. All right, and so now I have this final bit, which is the score marketing copy. So one thing that I wanna do, and, and so remember, this is calling an LLM as a judge evaluator. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually wrap this in a special type of decorator. So here, I can see that there's a section on logging feedback and I can use this context manager to basically encapsulate any traces that belong not to the application, 
but rather to the feedback. So we haven't talked about it yet, but I'm gonna make a few simple changes to this LLM application as well so I can start tracing it, so I can see the full kind of like trajectory of what happens. I also call an LLM here, and so I don't wanna conflate those two things. I don't want those to be treated as the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this decorator, or sorry, this context manager. I'm gonna call this, and then inside this context manager, and we'll see why this is important in a little bit, but inside this context manager, I'm just going to log the feedback of score, and I'll just do score.score. There we go, perfect. And I'm going to do the same thing here, except we can notice that I pass in the LinkedIn post here. All right, awesome. And then the last thing is, as I mentioned, I am going to decorate my code in the Langsmith traceables. So you'll notice here that I'm not using Langchain or anything like that, but I wanna trace this, I wanna know what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do from Langsmith import traceable, and then I'm going to decorate it traceable there. And I'm going to do the same thing in my LLM as a judge. And then I can also see here that we have this wrapper for the OpenAI SDK, which automatically logs things to Langsmith. So again, this is no Langchain. This is just logging directly from the OpenAI SDK. And so I'm going to do that here. And do the same thing in my agent. Great, so that's all it takes to do the Langsmith integration. What I did was I just marked these as Langsmith test cases. I explicitly logged the inputs, outputs, and feedback, and then I decorated my code to get the tracing. Now let's see how I run this and how I log results to Langsmith. So the way that I run this is exactly the same. I can just run PyTest tests. I'll notice that this fails at start because I have not exported my Langsmith API key. So let me do that and then I'll come right back. All right, I'm back. I exported that, let's run it again. All right, I get another error. I need to set Langsmith tracing equals to true. Great, let's run it again. Awesome, and I can see that it's running now. After it finishes running, I can go to Langsmith to check out the results. I can see that I've got this new row here of results. I can see that I'm tracking certain results up top, such as the score of the LLM grader, the length of the text, etc. I can click in to a given run, and I can see that I have my two results here. I have the input and the outputs. And then if I also open it up in this detailed view, I can see the variety of different metrics that I left scores for. So I can see the length, the length, the, the Boolean for whether it is longer than 280, this is the LinkedIn length score, the number of new lines, and then whether this is greater than two, um, and then the score overall. So this got graded in eight. Um, and then I can also see the input and the output here. If I click into the output, I have this view trace button. Let's click in there and I can see that I load this trace. Here, this is the function that I called and inside this function, this is the direct call to OpenAI. And if I load this up, I can see the exact prompt that went in, including my system message and the exact output that came out. So now this is super handy because I can view the results here. I can see the scores. I can share this with a colleague because this is all on, hosted on the, on the web. Um, I can look at the traces, I can debug what's going wrong, and I can compare them to previous runs, and I can start to track success over time or narrow in when things are failing. We're really excited about this Langsmith PyTest integration because we think it brings the best of two worlds together. It brings the software engineering world, which uses PyTest to run unit tests, integration tests, all of that, together with some of the ML and data science centric evaluation tools that we see people using to really dig in to these probabilistic and non-deterministic applications. 
there's a lot of additional functionality in this integration, such as how to trace intermediate calls, grouping tests into test suites, naming experiments, caching, so you don't have to make repeated calls to an LLM. And of course, you can use all of these with existing PyTest features like Parameterize, XDist, Async IO, and Watch. There's also a really cool local mode that will run it locally and print out results. Let's see what this looks like. So I just pass output equals ls here, and then it'll print out some intermediate outputs. And even better, I'll get an awesome little local report right in my terminal at the end. And so I can see a little bit about the inputs and outputs, but then also more importantly, all the feedback that's left, the duration that it took and other information. Give it a try and let us know what you think. Thanks.